Today in the news, we got some bendy Intel CPUs, an Intel GPU, if you can call it that, and some free games. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. So the company released Alder Lake a couple of months ago. Great comeback for the uh, blue team in terms of performance and even value, but people have been seeing some weird issues with the CPU itself. As you might have noticed from many reviews online, the CPU sometimes runs pretty hot. I mean, 90 plus degrees Celsius happens pretty often when stress testing, and especially when you look at the 12900K and KS. Well, that might not just be because the chip can consume all the way up to 240 watts when on load. Apparently, the CPU itself, like the PCB and heat spreader, well, that might be the cause. Here is an example posted by Jisaku Hibi on YouTube. Right here, they show the CPU in the socket. As you can see, it's not tied down by the bracket just yet. The big black thing on top of the CPU is a reference for flatness. You can barely see light pass through the crack between the CPU and that black thing. Now look at what happens after the CPU is tied down with the bracket on a regular motherboard. Now that's a bendy boy. It might not seem like much, but basically this huge gap has to be filled with thermal paste and it makes for pretty bad contact with the cooler. Now Intel knows about this and basically says that there's nothing to see here. Well, Thermal right doesn't seem to agree because they just released a bender correction frame for the CPU. It's a replacement to the original bracket for LGA1700 and it bolts into the existing bracket holes to keep your CPU flat. I mean, Thermal right is a trustworthy company when it comes to cooling, so if they needed to come out with a solution, then we know that there was a problem. Now, Intel says that, you know, if you do a modification, then you're voiding your warranty, but they're never going to know that we changed a bracket here or there. Next up, let's talk GPUs. Now, if you're into lower end graphics, you might know that your choices for a new GPU are pretty limited these days. Up to recently, you could get an RTX 3050 from Nvidia, an RX 6500 XT, or an RX 6400 non-XT if that last one came out a couple of days ago. Now, this pales in comparison to the choices that we had in the last generation. We had eight different versions of the 16 series GPUs from the green team, and AMD had four different GPUs in the 5000 series. Well, now it seems like Intel might join the fray too. According to a Billy Billy leaker called Enthusiastic Citizen, an ARC GPU called the ARC A310 is slated for release on the desktop market by the blue team. This would apparently be aimed at AMD's RX 6400, which brings me to the question. At this point, why? For someone who might just need a display output, I guess that a GPU of this class makes sense. But take AMD for example. That RX 6400 only has 12 compute units. You know what else has 12 compute units? AMD's laptop chips, like the CPUs with integrated graphics. Quite honestly, if you're in the market for a new CPU and GPU combo, and you were looking at this class of GPUs to put into your system, I would suggest you just skip this generation entirely and wait for the next generation of APUs. The moment that Navi equipped APUs hit the desktop market, I think that the lower end GPUs will simply disappear. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on, let's do our free game check. If you go to the Epic Store right now, you could get Riverbond for free. It's an indie action adventure title with some colorful art style. Now, if you have friends to play with, this game is pretty fun for like one night. After that, it gets a little bit repetitive, but hey, it's free, so go check it out. You can also get Amnesia Rebirth for free on the Epic Store. Now, this game was released about a year and a half ago, and if you know anything about the Amnesia franchise, it's that that you're in for some terrifying gameplay. Personally, I tried The Dark Descent back in 2014, and um, after about an hour of gameplay, I stopped. No comments on that. And uh, also, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you could get eight games for free, including Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, and also Plants vs. Zombies Battle of Neighborville, if that's your thing. So yeah, go check them out. It's all free. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.